Okay, the time is now 6.31, and Mr. Chairman, we do have a quorum. Awesome. Thanks, Tom. I'd like to call to uh, order the Thursday, August 19th meeting of the Parks and Rec Advisory Board, and we'll begin with roll call. Jamie Tucker? Present. Esteban Kalina? Present. Jason Alberici? Present. Myself? Missing is Phil? And Sean Michael and Joey. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for everybody who's uh, joining online today and for those in attendance. With next order of business is Pledge of Allegiance. If we'd all rise. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. All right, the next item is approval of today's meeting agenda. Mr. Chairman, yes, if sir. I may, we do have a visitor. If you want to maybe move them up. We could certainly do that. So, um, is that the YMCA? Yeah, or? I'd entertain a motion to <clears throat> move the new business item uh, 8A to after public comment, if somebody was. I'll make a motion to move uh, agenda item 8A to uh, uh, up the agenda to after public comment. Okay, a motion by Mr. Alberici. Do I hear a second? I second. A second Agreed. by Jamie. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Next item then is approval of the meeting agenda as amended. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, amended. A motion by Jason. I second. A second by Jamie. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay, so moved. <clears throat> Next item is the approval of the minutes from the May 20th meeting that are in front of you. <coughs> Looks like. If I, if there's no changes to the minutes, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes from May. I will second. I'm agree. Somebody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to <laughs> approve the minutes. <laughs> the meeting minutes. Uh, second a second by Jamie. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moves. The next item on tonight's agenda is public comment. Tom, do we have public comment? Yes, Mr. Chairman, we do. Thank you. So public comment is a time for citizens to share information with the Parks and Rec Advisory Board and to provide input and opinions on any matter that is not scheduled for its own public hearing during today's meeting. Ms. Williams? Please give us your name and your address. Mary Williams, 15270 High Grove Road. Quick, Thanks, um, I guess I got a little bit off on what you were discussing today, but I prepared, so thank you for yeah. listening. <laughs> um, I had four main issues to bring up with you today. The first has to do with um, parking at the former Milton Country Club. I live in the neighborhood Wood Valley that backs onto the active acres and our neighborhood has been used as the overflow parking for, so far, for um, the swim meets. It's been a couple of years, and our neighbors were integral to, I think, keeping that swim club, starting it up for the city and keeping it going. And they were very good about communicating with our neighborhood about, we're going to do a meet, there'll be parking. But as the, excuse me, as the team has gotten bigger, um, the, this past year, the parking was pretty much horrendous in our neighborhood. It did create safety issues. It was a nuisance. And as the park is developing now and getting ready to open for more people, we don't, really don't think our neighborhood should be the parking lot for the park. And I read through all of the uh, master plan, and there are a number of references to <clears throat> acknowledging that there are going to be parking issues and that 
that there were certain ways the city should work to address it. So I'm requesting today that you do start that planning so that our neighborhood doesn't by default become the only solution. I know that as the trail's getting built, you may have the opportunity to um, create some of the soft surface parking areas that were alluded to in the master plan. Um, you have the building on Freemanville and that lot that was alluded to that could be a shuttle parking lot and there's probably others. But hopefully at least by the time you maybe start any large event or kickoff meeting for the trail or certainly next year's swim program or if there's a big tennis program that it should be in place. <clears throat> The second thing is um, also in that master plan, there are references to prohibiting Wood Valley from being a vehicular access to the park. So our neighborhood has, certain of us in the neighborhood have had discussions about how can we prohibit people from driving into our neighborhood, deciding they're gonna park in the back and access it anyway because they've already done that or they know it's available. And um, it's kind of dangerous, the entrance to our subdivision, the way it goes up the hill and curves, it's blind and if people are turning around. So I think that there should be a way that we can do signage or maybe even some temporary barriers that announce there's no park access or no park parking as we're inviting people to come out to the park. We don't want them coming into our neighborhood. You've had police come out to direct traffic into our neighborhood for parking. I would go so far as to suggest we may need police to keep people from parking in our neighborhood. Um, a third point is about uh, what I thought you were discussing tonight was some of the starting to talk about what events or classes or activities would be held in the country club building itself now that it's being renovated. And um, I did follow the city's discussion about the um, Painted Horse Winery, and I feel that many of the issues that were discussed as far as events there apply to potential events at the former Milton Country Club Clubhouse. It has to do with noise, light, traffic, congestion, parking, alcohol, uh, that sort of thing. So if you look back at the notes, or I have a copy for you of like the summary article in the local paper, I just think those are considerations you should address up front. I know I live where I live, I can hear everything at the pool, I can hear everything around the, the uh, clubhouse. It is not quiet, despite what you think it's all the way across the parking lot. No, it's not, I hear everything. I can seconds. certainly hear tennis court players. Am I up? Not yet. Not yet. And then finally, I did want to ask if we could work on fine arts programming. Um, I happen to be a senior citizen. I happen to not have kids. I don't benefit from sports programs that we support. I don't benefit from the schools. I pay, you know, a lot of taxes. <laughs> and since the Alpharetta MOU was um, expired and not renewed, I'm not taking my ceramics classes. I'm not taking my painting classes. It's really um, sort of a miss. I know that the teacher in Alpharetta is a Milton resident. I'm sure she could make some proposals for some of those programs. She is a very artsy person and there's a lot of artists. So I would just sort of encourage that. And on a final point, it was at least a year ago that uh, this advisory board had a session with the city council about that Alpharetta MOU. And what I recall is that the descriptions for adult programming and senior programming were kind of used interchangeably. There is a distinction. I hope, I hope you all are aware of that. If not, I can fill you in later, but they're not the same thing. So just because there's a team senior services does not mean there's an adult class. You know, they're two different things. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I appreciate thank you. that.
Any other public comment, Tom, for tonight's meeting? No, Mr. Chairman. Okay, well, thanks so much. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda will be the YMCA programming opportunity. So good afternoon. Um, this is kind of a first for me, so I appreciate um, you guys letting me join. I'm Mickey Robinson. I'm the branch exec at one of our Ys in uh, Brookhaven, but here tonight to talk about uh, programming for the Dinsmore Road location. Um, as you can see in the handout, um, what we did is we put together a sample of some group exercise offerings and uh, with a Y, obviously, what we put down here currently is Zumba, yoga, and Y45, or some for, form of like hit boot camp type class. But because of uh, you know as large of an organization as we are, we have several instructors that could basically accommodate any request as far as uh, group exercise programming at the, that location senior strength, Pilates, whatever uh, really the community demands at the time. The sampling that we put was just what was most popular at the two Ys that are closer to the city of Milton, which is the Alpharetta Y and the Forsyth County Y. Um, the pricing, you can see, we basically priced uh, the classes similar to any other studio um, format. It, they're in monthly sessions. You can come two times a week. And we did prioritize the benefit of a city resident over a non-city res resident with a 50% uh, increase for those that are non-residents. As far as staffing it, the Y would staff it. We would, you know, we asked for a, a studio, uh, what is it, stereo, some, some sort of sound, but uh, we would provide, you know, and certified instructors and all of those things. Uh, we're following all, you know, COVID protocols and, and uh, any kind of safety procedures as well. And uh, we plan to cap that class at 20 participants just simply to make sure that it's a positive experience. And then also the room is not incredibly large. So um, not sure else what else you wanna know about the group exercise piece, but I'll um, pause for a second. Is this something that we can have questions or no? Yes? It is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Because yeah. this is like just yeah. me and you yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I did have a question okay. about marketing. Yep. So would that be your responsibility or shared? And what have you done for marketing in the past? Yeah, so great question. Um, so we would put together a marketing piece with the logo of the city of Milton, highlight the partnership. And what we've done, we've done that in the past with the city of Brookhaven, city of Chambly, Doraville, all of those guys. And it really is just a way to emphasize the partnership between the two cities. Uh, the one great thing I think about the Y is you've got a lot of brand recognition when you push out something, especially people see us as safe and high quality. Um, so we've definitely, we most recently partnered with a church in Sandy Springs that had um, really zero, um, programming going on and we pushed out um, some information on summer camp options two weeks before we were supposed to start. And uh, we were able to run four weeks of camp there for um, around 45 kids, which was, and it was great. I mean, the kids had a good time and uh, the community really, really respond, responded. We did ask that, um, you know, the city, um, push to their folks. So we would want, you know, any kind of social or any kind of marketing pieces to be shared with uh, your contacts as well, but we would share it with uh, the Y participants. Okay, thank you. Can I, can I uh, butt in here yeah, for a moment? Yeah, right ahead, Tom. Um, so there's a couple of things that we probably would like to um, highlight here. Uh, first, she mentioned programming and she did touch on summer camps. We have been talking about doing summer camps as well. Um, out of the former Milton Country Club, so it wouldn't be just adult fitness. Um, there would be some summer camps and camps over breaks. I think that was discussed yeah, well was, as well actually, for Fulton just, County breaks. I was just holding on the group X piece. Oh, oh right. I was going to go into the. Oh, she's got a lot more. <laughs> yeah, got a lot more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So we. I'll, are, I'll let you finish. Thank yeah, you. there is a plan, obviously, to host uh, school out days and any type of you know holiday camp, any interest that the community may have. 
One thing that we did notice in Sandy Springs where we hadn't been before, um, specialty uh, camps were really popular. So we did like a Mythbusters camp or a STEAM or STEM camp that families really enjoyed and appreciated. So the pricing again is similar to the pricing in Group X. We did the 50% increase for non-residents and we'd pr prioritize uh, City of Milton residents registration two weeks in advance before any others. Um, same, we would provide counselors, staff, supplies, and all of that stuff. We're kind of like a nonstop shop. So when we approach cities, sometimes we just say, how can we serve those that, that you can't, or you know, what need can we provide that the city's not currently offering? So that leads to one question, Tom, right? Then this proposal as it's laid out doesn't overlap with anything we currently got in our- That is correct. In our catalog, if you will. Yes, gotcha, great. Other questions? So there, there's two things that that I'd like to bring up. One is um, there is an aspect of this that kind of goes outside of our typical uh, agreements with our other providers. Um, and that is the, the Y membership aspect. Um, and there could be a Y member that is a non-resident. And in this proposal that, that Y member would be given the resident rate mm -hmm. because of the partnership. Um, so that's one thing to, to put on the table. And, and the other is, and Mickey, um, I, I don't see anything on the, the commission are we still looking for the, what was the? I think that, that where you and I landed was 15%. I just didn't update. Oh, so okay, great. We're good there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Great. And that's you it know, from staff. The one thing I can say is, you know, I've been at the Brookhaven Y for six years and went through three mayors probably the first two years. There was a lot going on when I first got there. But when we started partnering with them, there was an, an emphasis similar to this in positioning uh, city of Brookhaven residents and making sure they had priority, which I understand. But I think from a Y perspective, it, it's just we have to make sure that we care for Y members. And it was actually a great partnership. There was, uh, re it was really kind of a seamless thing that happened. It was this thing that was unknown. Um, but once we move past it, it's actually become a really beautiful partnership between the two. So what did that look like in Brookhaven and then Mickey? So you've got in our nearest wise, the Alpharetta one, right? Yep. Over on West yep. side. So what, what kind of ratios, how the water settle Y members versus Brookhaven residents? Well, in, in Brookhaven, you know, our Y actually where we sit, we sit in the city of Brookhaven, but our Y serves five cities. So mm -hmm. we're a little bit unique. I did pull uh, the zip codes for Y members that are, that live in the city of Milton. And there were about 600 households, three around 300, 250 in uh, Forsyth and the same in Alpharetta, so they're kind of split. The one thing that I would say about this location, um, after meeting Tom, walking around, I mean, seeing it and then driving around, one thing that I think that is important about exercise in, in camps is that, especially exercise, you're going to go where it's close to home. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously just that one time is not going to really predict traffic patterns that I would know. But I do think that, you know, somebody that's going that lives up there, or you know, a, a, a Forsyth member is probably not likely to come down to this. Um, but I don't know, you know, I, I don't live up here. I live in mm. Peach Street Corners. Mm. So um, we again, though, Every time we do an event, especially with Brookhaven, we provide zip codes sometimes, depending on what we're doing, just so that uh, Brookhaven can make sure that they stay true to the majority of their programming supports that zip code in their residence. Gotcha. What about uh, liability? So if someone were to get hurt, who's responsible? Yeah. So there's, you know, at, at every location that we're at, we just, do a certificate of uh, insurance for the providers. And the one great thing that I can say about our staff and who we put in front of kids, especially, and in front of group exercise classes, they, they have all been background checked and um, you know drug screened, and they really have a higher tier of training than some other um, probably in the industry. 
Yeah, I would imagine it's just like our regular provider yeah. agreement with all the okay. same bells same, and whistles same requirements, requirements that are on it. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Other questions? I guess the one question mm -hmm. is how fast can you, <laughs> how fast can we get the building started or finished? Uh, worry about when we can fill it because um, that's the, really the next big piece, right? Is to kind of match up the yeah Fine. platform yeah. to the right. to the programming. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think realistically, we're probably looking at November, which I'll give you a deeper update later. Okay. But yes. Yeah. I mean, on its surface, it sounds great. You know, I don't see a. Um, any objection? I guess the right thing to do would be some sort of recommendation for us to pursue staff or allow staff to continue to pursue this deeper. If, unless there's any other objections or questions. I will make a motion for staff to continue to uh, uh, down the path with the Milton or with the YMCA for programming. Okay. Motion by Jason to pursue programming with the YMCA. I will second. A second Agreed. by Jamie. All in favor? Aye. 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 I don't believe any opposed. So be it. Thanks, Mickey, for coming up. Appreciate Thank that. You. Thank you, guys. I appreciate yeah, good luck. It. Thank you. Okay. Uh, back to the agenda and the next item of business committee reports. Ah, there we are. Look at that. Oh, that's that. official. Right. Okay. To the extent feasible, possible updates. Uh, Esteban, anything to share with us about baseball? At this time, I don't have any comment for Hope, but I don't know if, if Juan gave you a feedback because I, I sent a text to him asking for information and he didn't reply me back. Um, so. Football is slated to start practice this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen numbers yet. Um, uh, they're, I hear they're good, but I haven't seen numbers. Okay. Uh, practice starts Saturday, and then they'll roll into their normal weekly practices next week. Um, evaluations were last weekend at Bell. Um, yeah, summer the summer program went well. The new Sandlot program that they're doing in the summer, kind of a easy going rec program, I guess you could say. Um, yeah, that's that's all that I know. Thomas, is there anything I missed? I think you hit the main points there. Okay, awesome. Uh, Jason. Uh, lacrosse starts next week as well, uh, both on the boys and the girls side. Um, I have not talked to Eagle Sticks on registration numbers, but um, I know both the Cambridge boys and Milton Boys uh, registrations numbers are uh, increased a little bit from last year. Um, not tremendously, but but up a little bit. Probably between the two programs, maybe 10 or 15 kids, uh, which is great. Um, like I said, I haven't talked to um, Tim or Eagle Sticks regarding the registration numbers, but I know that they are off and running, getting ready for next week. Great. Thanks. Do I anything to add though? No. Across great. Um, I don't have Sean Michael here. Anybody want uh, Tom got anything to the uh, I spoke with the vice president of the board um, end of last week and uh, the numbers are very, very good. Um, they have a very healthy cheer program as well. Um, he threw around the number of north of 500 kids. Um, but we can't forget that NAFL is a program provider in two cities, and that number is with those two cities combined. Um, so once the practice schedule is laid out, we'll know the Milton numbers. Uh, the last I spoke with him, we will have tackle back at Bell again. Um, to what extent, I'm not sure. Uh, it depends on the team formation. Um, Is there anything I'm missing? Okay. Uh, Bell Park is hosting the flag football jamboree this coming Saturday. And uh, I believe Milton High School held the tackle football last weekend. That's correct. Awesome. Great. Okay. Uh, basketball. Uh, summer uh, went well for them. 
numbers were uh, solid when I talked to them. Uh, for given everything that went on, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they were a little. They were a little bit down, but yeah. understandably. Um, and that was the last uh, I hadn't talked to him since my kid went to camp, which was yeah. I've July. had no update on fall. Yeah, he, he, there is a fall program, but um, but I have not seen numbers or anything. Gotcha. Will they be able to get back in the schools? Is that the plan? We hope. We hope. Yeah, that's holding our breath on that one, huh? <clears throat> um, I don't have much to report on te tennis or swim unless you've got some updates for me, Tom. Uh, swim team, uh, there were north of 200 kids that swam. I think it was, do you remember the number? It was, it, was, it, was 20, it was between 200 and 210. Yes. Um, up from 140-ish. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the the... The public comment was was accurate um, yep. from Ms. Williams earlier. There there was a lot more swimmers this summer, um, and uh, it went well. Um, the the Mustang swim team uh, won all their meets, and uh, from what I've been told in the past, they don't win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's uh, great. I think I think the increased numbers helps their chances. Just the way that it's formatted, I think larger teams have a better chance of winning. Um, yes. the overall meet. I've never participated in swim team, but um, I think the more numbers you have, the better chance of yep. having the faster swimmers. Um, on tennis, uh, I spoke with tennis uh, earlier this week, or with Terry earlier this week. Uh, he just said that he's full. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's going to be getting us numbers here soon, but he's full. Awesome. <clears throat> I know in Cricket Creek, I mean, our, my kids swam lit when they were little, and it was – you know, as you described, Mary, parking went all the way through the neighborhood, well beyond the parking lot. Um, thought popped in my head about a little bit of communication. I mean, we forced one-sided parking, and there was only a few home meets, so there were some ways to manage it uh, a little bit. Um, but it was certainly uh, people parked and walked 10 minutes to get to the pool because it was. Yeah, go right ahead. Yeah. But it's not really valid. So, so we're not doing that one to go to our neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I hear it. Yeah, other than that, like, yeah, no, I hear you there. Okay. Good, good point. Thank you. Fair point. Um, I don't have Phil here. Uh, talk about arts and adult programming. I can catch you up on the arts. Yeah, tell us. Been a been a couple months uh, since we met, so I do have um, great a, a pretty fair amount to share with you. I'll start with rhythm and shoes, our our youth dance program. Uh, this summer they um, offered multiple classes in both June and July. Uh, we did make one class in June and one class in July. Uh, that class ran out of Bethwell Community Center. Um, currently, we're taking a break in August with the school. I uh, was getting back to school, um, uh, so there's nothing going on in August. But registration is op open for uh, fall session one that starts in September, um, and it'll be on Thursdays uh, this fall mm -hmm. at Bethwell Community Center as well. Uh, well Song Tai Chi uh, took a break uh, since May uh, with the completion of their fifth class uh, in its first series since being a, a partner with the city of Milton. Uh, tai Chi runs subsequent classes. Um, so it benefits to start from the first class and go all the way to the fifth. Um, but we've currently, uh, excuse me, we've recently opened registration um, for the second round of subsequent classes. Or excuse me, we've, we completed our intro class uh, to Tai Chi and we're in registration is currently open for the second class uh, in that series. Um, uh, tai Chi is now taught uh, by Mary Hinkle, the successor of uh, Margaret Miller. Um, and classes uh, right now uh, with the weather, they're being, they're being held outdoors at the Broadwell Pavilion. Uh, next up, we have the Photo Creative, our uh, photography program. Over the summer, um, they just, they blew up. They did, they did very well. We had uh, two five-day successful summer camps, one in June and one in July. Uh, this was um, uh, for, for the youth. Um, and these being five-day classes held right out here uh, at Community Place 
and it being a new program, both classes had seven of 12 uh, slots filled. So, uh, you know, we're very proud uh, to have them on board. Uh, they also offered some one day um, offerings, one day classes uh, for residents and non-residents held here. Um, they like this, this location with their small um, with their small classes at Community Place, and they take advantage of downtown Crab Apple uh, for photo opportunities. So it's been been really great. We've got a lot of positive feedback uh, from parents and campers, as well as some some awesome social media content that we've shared on Facebook. Um, and we've also been in a discussion um, with the photo photo creative regarding their involvement in Crab Apple Fest. They want to play a role and help out the city, obviously sp spread word for their program as well as our other fine arts programs. And, um, you know, we're excited to see what they have in store for us. They're currently not offering anything, but I think they're just an email away from from getting back, especially with school, you know, getting back. And you know, it'd be interesting to tie that in, um, whether it be adult programming or even tie that into, like, you know, doing a class and doing baseball photos, right? And doing action photos and how to do that with the football or the lacrosse and baseball, mm -hmm. basketball. Exactly. There I think is. there'd be some parents that would certainly be interested in how to take better pictures of their kids, but it would also drive some content for, for them and how you could tie things in, you know, at practices and. Absolutely. They've uh, already mentioned some of that stuff to us. They've, they've had a few early in, in their, um, you know, program hood, if you will, uh, they did offer some adult classes, so they do, do both youth and adult. Mm -hmm. um, the adult classes have not uh, have yet to to make a class, but I'm sure they're going to come back. And they've also talked about exactly what you're talking about, some of the action shots with our sports and kind of teaming up and holding a class at Bell or holding a class mm -hmm. at, at Cox Road or day. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, I, I, that's definitely in their repertoire. I'm sure they're going to be coming with with some offerings, especially getting uh, started with the fall season. And, and if I may, they have. Uh, they have done that with other private clubs in the area or as, as kind of like a, a sample. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, 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 it's already happening. Happening. Yeah. And, we just and I think they kind of gave it a first shot. Nudge and, it a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Great. Yep. Sounds awesome. Next up we have Bach to rock our music program. Um, unfortunately this summer we were unable to gain traction, uh, you know, with several of our offerings that we did through the city uh, we had a, a beginner guitar class, a Rock City camp class, um, and we also had a Kids in Keys, a keyboarding class that was actually held um, at the Bach to Rocks facility. Unfortunately, the the, the Milton classes uh, here at one of our facilities, both of those classes didn't make, but we did have um, a few Milton residents take advantage of the Milton code, if you will, to to get a great cost for the Kids in Keys. So that did make at at uh, the Bach to Rock facility. Um, Bach to Rock has been present at the Milton Farmers Market um, in the past months. The Milton Farmers Market is on Wednesdays, and Bach, Bach to Rock is always there, uh, you know, sharing their word and, and you know, jamming out for everybody that that comes over to the Broadwell Pavilion. And uh, we're still hopeful to find success, and we'll cont continue to market and, and continue to you know try different ways to fill some of those classes for them and make music kind of a, a stamp in the city. Uh, same goes uh, with our STEAM Challenge Island. Those are summer camp offerings. Uh, we had two great offerings this summer. Unfortunately, we couldn't catch traction with those either. Uh, so those didn't make. Um, but, you know, we're hopeful and, and we're going to continue to try. Uh, I guess next summer uh, for Challenge Island. And then finally, uh, we've recently partnered with Kathy, Kathy Huff and Love Goga. Um, Love Goga is, is goat yoga. So uh, we did uh, a special event with our special event staff here at the city, uh, just kind of a one-off before they became uh, an official partner, and it was a hit at, at Broadwell. So it was a no-brainer to bring them aboard and make them, you know, part of the Milton Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, so they are, are currently registration is open for uh, our first GOGA class, uh, and it'll be September 18th at Broadwell Pavilion. Um, in addition, uh, Kathy, Huff, Kathy Huff. Uh, brought Mindful Seeds as another offering. Uh, in 2020, Kathy Huff brought to life another concept, Mindful Seeds, a lifestyle brand that offers workshops, series, products, and services to help others live mindfully every day and maximize their wellness, their wellness of mind, body, and soul. 
And right now we're currently taking registration uh, for two different series, a woman's mindfulness series and a mommy and me mindfulness series. Uh, so those will be coming up. And like I said, registration is open and more information can be found on you know any of these fine arts programs on the city's catalog. So that uh, that concludes it for for Phil's fine arts. Thanks, Phil. That's a lot, Thomas. It Thanks, is. man. The um, better job than Phil would have. <laughs> you know, uh, it, 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 the Bach to Rock thing makes me think about again the parks are high concentration. You know, granted, there's a lot of kids in active sports program, but they've all got siblings, mm -hmm. right? So maybe it's a place they should be bringing their little advertisement into the park on game day on the weekends, since they can probably get the biggest hit of families um, in one spot, even bigger audience than perhaps the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. Maybe something for them to think about once the programming kicks into game, games up there. Absolutely. Yeah, we're working on a new marketing kind of campaign to yeah. try to help the smaller programs that we have um, to kind of gain that traction. Yeah. And, and uh, hopefully in the next month here, Great. That'll, that'll kind of roll out. Um, you know, we push Facebook posts out a lot. Yeah. But um, we can't just rely on that. No, so yeah. we're looking at other cool. other means to try to help spread awesome. the word. Awesome. Okay, next item, uh, unfinished business. We'll talk about the junior park <clears throat> program. I don't want to skip over uh, adult programming. Sorry about oh, that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, adult programming. Sorry, Steve, uh, Scott, I didn't want to to skip over, but uh, adult programming, our Rush Union Adult Soccer League, um, still going strong at Cox Road there. That's their you know home base over there. This summer numbers were a little lower. Uh, typically we offer both 11 verse 11 and seven verse seven, um, but this summer we only had an 11 verse 11 league. Uh, so due to a few rainouts, they're winding up, they're winding down uh, this coming Monday on the 23rd, and then they'll shut down for a few weeks and then they're already opening registration for fall, which will start uh, mid-September. So awesome. we're looking forward uh, to our continued partnership with Rush Union. And I will note, we, we saw a an increased number of, you know, vacations and whatnot this summer from, you know, the aftermath of COVID. Um, and, and I have a feeling that had a lot to do with a lot of these summer registrations being a little lower. Right. Uh, you know, folks didn't want to commit to you know, a six or seven week soccer yeah. season if I they were going to be, if they were going to be gone. Vacation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, we saw it here at city hall, you know, a lot, a lot of weeks where it yeah. was light. Um, so I have a feeling a lot of it is attributed to that Great. or at least, at least some. Yeah. I believe that. Okay. Am I done with committee reports? Awesome. Thanks, Thomas. That was great. Yeah. Uh, we'll now move to unfinished business and pick up with the junior park program. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, um, we're fortunate to have um, Ms. Groth on staff. This is right off her wheelhouse. Um, that she has presented uh, one, a couple options to you prior in a prior meeting on how, how, how do we structure this. Mm -hmm. um, and so she took that guidance and has created a while it's still self-guided, it's rather robust. Um, so I'd like to have Emily uh, just give you a little update on where we're at and um, provide us with any feedback or comments. Uh, we'd be welcome to anything. Yeah, um, it's been a while since I talked about it, so I've definitely had some with the idea. Um, but I think we kind of landed on five park self-guided tour. Uh, did by individual families at your own pace. Um, and we would provide the materials um, to that. And it kind of just looks like a guided activity book for each park. Um, kind of the, the feeler or the intro page that you would be able to find or that we could advertise with. That would include more big picture citywide things. So like map of all the parks, uh, contact info. Yeah. Going along that following pages, I have kind of was able to work on an example specifically for Birmingham. The parks that I'm looking at to do this tour would be Birmingham, Providence, Bell Park, um, former Milton Country Club. Done in any order. Um, kind of download the content. 
our website or potentially have it uh, on hand at the parks. Mm -hmm. It would be more accessible to be able to download it. And if you complete all the parks or however many you want to do, um, pressure. Uh, each park would have their own little token that you could come and complete. Um, attractive for the little ones uh, while they're learning and diving into the parks. Uh, get all of those tokens, or if you are able to complete all of those activity guides for all the five parks, come to City Hall and there'll be kind of certification, similar to what the National Park Service does um, with a ranger, maybe take an oath into the world of being an environmental steward. Mm -hmm. Goal for families and, and kids. Does it matter if they're a Milton resident? Um, I don't know. We haven't. Really I've, I don't think so. You just bring any kid up here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Expose them to the parks, you know. Yeah. And you had talked about the QR codes like a couple months ago. So are you thinking that's yeah, probably so going to be yeah, available? on this page? Okay. Maybe you could throw a QR code on that. Yeah. Um, uh, be instead of advertising like one specific larger activity guide, uh, all encompassing mm -hmm. shorter guide with QR codes that could lead you to which which one you're interested in and show you more about all of the parks. Mm -hmm. Door into choosing one you start with. So going along that, um, something to kind of a rough draft maybe to give the graphic designer. Um, this is getting out of my wheelhouse now at this point. <laughs> <laughs> This kind of goes along with um, different activity guides that you can find even um, departments or as, as large as the National Park Service kind of all follow the same, same format. Mention grabbing title and then different themes along each page. Mm -hmm. One on your left is more of an intro talking specifically about the, the park. This one would be Birmingham. Maps and what you're looking at, how many trails, what kind of trails. <clears throat> and then I kind of frame Birmingham four different uh, activities that you can follow along with on each of the different trails. So that would be white. Further in the activity guide, you'd be walking along the yellow trail, following the directions on what that activity, uh, bigger picture and then narrow focus. So while you're on the yellow trail, you'd be focusing on the interpretive signs that are already out there. Um, you have the, the creek and what a watershed is. Uh, so a lot of these activity guides just put you in a certain place um, and guide you in, in case. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chattahoochee River Basin, that would all be one, one activity. And then the more hands-on thing, that would kind of make you earn the junior ranger or earn that token um, activities like Bottom left, what is a tributary? Um, space to fill in um, that, or something stopping along the trail and, and drawing what you see, and kind of labeling trees or seeing if you can draw draw your own river. Or I think the activity could vary between ages and their interests. Another example would be to the right on the blue trail. Um, this one is a lot more different, uh, focuses on history. This one would be similar to like what you could do at Freedom Park. Uh, not always environmental, um, it's just localized. The idea that I had for Blue Trail. Go further along in a couple pages for each trail, um, flesh out the activities a little bit more, take it to a graphic designer, like I said. Um, yeah. and definitely work on, on the other parks. Uh, kind of make it a a la carte if you want, but also an all-encompassing package. No, oh, that looks great. This is great. This is excellent. I love it. I think you should work with other cities <laughs> and you could get this huge super badge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a North Fulton yeah. Ranger, yeah. That's awesome. North Fulton Ranger cap. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're on sombrero, <laughs> you know, something big, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> something. That's a great idea. That's great. Really we're, cool. we're, um, we've talked about it. We've set it aside. We're bringing it back. So, where do you think the age range settles, Emily, and the kids that would be junior rangers? Um, where were you trying to? It hit? really, it really just kind of depends. Um, the National Park Service is I lean to, towards as like a frame, 
and they call it not the Junior Rangers. Um, there's articles and pictures of 99 year olds collecting all the stamps. They do stamps instead of stuff. Mm -hmm. And them finally becoming a Junior Ranger. Um, so it's really just anyone that wants to be certified in yep. Park Municipality uh, under the age. Gotcha. They would, I think, to answer that, it would be kind of depending on what kind of activities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I would, I would think somewhere in the five to 12, 13 might be like yeah. your, yeah. what, Sweet what spot. you, or what you design yeah. your activities you design for. Towards. Yeah. And if yeah. a 99 year old wants to do it, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. That's yeah. No, I was thinking the same way. It's a, yeah. it's written to us, uh, elementary school level and then anybody yeah. else. That would be the majority of your audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. No, outstanding. March on, go fast. That looks great. <clears throat> you need anything from us? No. Okay. No. That's awesome. We'll, we'll, we'll continue. Yeah, no, that's yeah, fantastic. That's great. Okay. Uh, next item, unfinished business wall of fame criteria review. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> Thanks, Tom. In uh, going through a couple years of the wall of fame, um, and the nomination um, qualifications, and we've already addressed some some of the issues of the past where we kind of changed up the form a little bit to try to get it a little more narrowed down. Um, we've kind of hit some other <laughs> potential <laughs> uh, issues, and I, I'd you know there's one in particular that I see a concern with, but I, I'd. Has everyone had a chance to review? Uh, I, I probably would prefer to open it up to the board and you can discuss, you know, what you're finding and then go from there. So even if you haven't about <clears throat> all ranked your candidates yet, that's okay. But we there's certainly a wide smattering of candidates that from, 20, from the original inauguration year of 19 to this year. Um, as I was reviewing it, I was um, surprised a little about what people thought were Wall of Fame worthy. You know, um, uh, so may so may great barbecues because the, I don't know. I mean, this year was better than last year. Last year, the text for every yeah. everybody was we got we got the text part fixed. Yes, yeah, that part yes, got at fixed. least at fifty percent. But yeah. I mean, some people put some information is not. I mean, yeah. this guy is a good sport and he makes good barbecues. Yeah, what I was most what I was most <laughs> troubled by was component of these. There was I was most troubled by there wasn't and quite a few that there wasn't reference to what they did in the city. That was a claim to some other accomplishment, uh, often as an adult, that never said that I was you know grew up in the parks program or I was active in the parks program. And when this first all started. Uh, a history lesson having been here so long it was really kind of to recognize people who move through the parks program so the f ideal candidate is a ch is a youth who grows on to some level of success that's the ideal candidate we've had quite a few of those yeah. luckily and we and i think we might even had one this year um then you get into people who supported the programs coaches and administrators and you know those are good um and that's a nice group of people to recognize and we've recognized some of those people in the past um but the fact that you're a high school coach and have a winning season, I'm not sure that's the city's job to recognize that as that wasn't, I don't believe the intent of the wall of fame to recognize a high school paid coaching position in your recognition to move and be some sort of person in the city of Milton. We seem to be getting a lot of, I did a little bit of coaching and I played golf against this guy one day and I'm like, that's nice, but I'm, uh, you know, Yes. Um, that's that wasn't what I'm working. So it may I think Tom is appropriate to bring it forth as we're finished in this class. Uh, you know, maybe we need to just look at the eligibility requirements and kind of tighten them up around more description on your involvement in the city of Milton parks and recreation programming is a start. Um, even if it is not as a participant, if you're an adult and you coached in it and something perhaps that's worthy, but there's a, quite a few that don't even, other than being a resident, there's no acknowledgement of their, of what they stand for. And it's not really the, 
city's all sports banquet. It's the Parks and Rec's Wall of Fame, the the city's Wall of Fame. So I'm I'm looking for fame, not just some yeah. level of adult accomplishment. Uh, no no offense to any of the equestrian people that you know were that were nominated. That, that that's not the no, but at the end it's a Wall of Fame. Yeah, like a yeah. So uh, people are yes. I mean grabbing that. I mean every people. I mean every people in that list have something to say. I mean, do something great, coach, uh, but it's a, it's a world of fame. Yeah. I mean, what I do is I'm going to, do, to Google. Google, I mean, this guy, okay, Google. I see the photo in the, in the, in the university with the uniform. Okay, this guy passed from this Milton High School, good. Yeah, yeah. See, but some guys like, a, He's a good coach. My my son love him because he bring the new bat and I do the same. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Your day's coming. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I start with one kid that don't don't hit even a basketball ball at the end of the season, hit a home run. Mm -hmm. right? I can do I can be there. No, mm -hmm. it's not a good thing. No, I, I, I again no disservice to any of the coaches, current or past. Um, um there's lots of good coaches in these programs and, yeah, and yeah. some get nominated and some don't. And um, this, the extent to which this has gone where people are just nominating for the fame part of the wall, not the accomplishment part seems to be missing. So, um, and we may get to some of that from, you know, if we give an outline of the questions and one of those is contribution to the city of Milton parks. Rec. Yeah. Right. Which is not a current question. And so, you know, again, just having some familiarity with, um, you know, my high school Hall of Fame and how they're very specific. High school accomplishments, post high school accomplishments, meaning college yep. and adult accomplishments, right. right? So if you, maybe you were an average athlete, but you've gone on to have great success as a college coach or whatever the case yep. may be, yep. that would justify for recognition and, you know, but it's very distinct there. I think we could do something that's very distinct right yeah. very you know contributions to and you know hey in this in that model there could be some kid that was an, an all-world you know baseball player and then really didn't do much after that but in the parks and rec program he was maybe hall of fame worthy until he was 10 or you know until he was 12 that's still somebody to consider right <laughs> um because it's his contributions there so the other thing that, um, so, you know, I'm looking at the criteria that are in front of us, right? There's six. So it really focuses on the top, the first three. And to your point, maybe it needs more than three, Jason. Um, eligibility, begins, you know, begins five years after high school is great. Achieved a personal level of success beyond high school. I think you're right. The only thing it really talks to the city has been an active supporter right, of surrounding community programs or may have participated. And, you know, maybe the, maybe the real question is on the nomination side, Tom, that maybe we're not being discernment enough. We're a little too soft. You know, maybe we're letting in too many people yes. rather than saying this, this candidate doesn't meet it because this question is unanswered. Mm -hmm. He achieved some level after uh, high school, he or she, but we don't even know if he ever played in a program in our city. Because there's some really interesting nominees who I wrote myself a note like, what did they do in the city of Milton? And I was really proud of their success, but didn't see that. So maybe it's, maybe we need to be a little tighter on the. Yeah. And the other, and the other part of it, if I recall, now we're really going back in a time machine here. The idea was, you know, it might not have been a city of Milton program because it could have been prior to the city's formation for the city, or right. it could have been a, hey, look, we don't offer, we'll go down the equestrian road. We don't offer equestrian, but what if um, a Milton resident, you know, did as a youth lived in Milton, did their horseback riding in Milton and Rode then in the became an Olympic rider. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the original intent was even someone like that could qualify, but um, someone that moved here as, it, as a, it was a champion javelin thrower. <laughs> it yeah. doesn't necessarily, because they live here, doesn't make them, the same so spirit of favorite. recognition in yeah. our community that we're looking mm -hmm. for, right? I could eat a lot of hot dogs, but that doesn't make me Wall of Fame worthy in the city of Milton, you know, just because you can do it. Um, I like, 
uh, Jason's idea about another sentence that speaks to the contributions and requires the submission to identify what did you do as a youth? What did you accomplish in high school? What did you accomplish beyond high school? Because then that takes some of the candidates we saw fixes that sentence of, well, I played golf. Yeah. And, and, and I own a business. And, you know, that, that's great. And I'm so happy to have you in our community. But, yes. you know, um, but, and it's you still, didn't play good enough golf, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I still, still think that leaves open someone who, you know, has comes in and, and changes our sports as an adult. Didn't live here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the youth part and the high school part isn't there. But, you know, they spent 20 years running, you know, volunteering their time, volunteering their time and running things. Yep. And, you know, there's a lot of data, you know, information. So that section of the questions yep. would be very rich yep. and it doesn't preclude that. Right. I mean, there's, you know, even in the football hall of fame and, and baseball, there's contributors to the game, right. People that were sports writers and, and things, right. It, it doesn't have to be just the athlete. Um, so I think it still leaves that person open because there's probably some that we would seem to recognize at, at some point, right? That, you know, never played sports here, but contributed. Yeah, yeah. So um, maybe what you need from us, Tom, is that... Um, I, I had an idea. Uh, feel free to, yeah. to reject it, but um, would, it, would it be beneficial to maybe have like a small subcommittee of the board um come back next month with a with a, re, with a recommendation um of some changes if we i was going to recommend i was thinking that line but i think there's an issue with yes sizes of subcommittees okay and yes. i think we need to go ask that question because i think in the past we were easy to turn into working groups different than committees formal committees don't exist as a subcommittee of the advisory board um, could two people get together and draft something and bring it to the next meeting and say, here's our working draft that we use as a document? Could they meet with you? They probably can. But for us to embrace them and endorse them, I think, was the hang up. Okay. Yes. To, to make it a. I think we went over. I, I think we went over that when we were doing this the last time. Yeah. Right. Because yep. I think we formed a subcommittee and there was some concerns. Yeah. So my, that. my thought would be for people who have specific comments, sentences, or words that you're interested in, send them to Tom. Okay. And then you guys can I'll compile and I'll compile and then bring it to us at next month's meeting. And then we can do that. What was like in, uh, let's see, item number one, what's the intent of writing surrounding community? Because that is such a vague subjective. I think it was, it uh, is, but it, it go, to Tom's to point, me. it reflects pre milk. Mm -hmm. So if you were before 2012 mm -hmm. and you were a youth that play, that lived in the same house, that you live in today, but you played baseball at Wills Park and went on to a major league career, right. you're in the surrounding community because uh, okay. we didn't exist as a city of Milton. Because otherwise, I, any I, accomplishment. I, I actually am one of those people. Yeah. Uh, so I, otherwise, the only accomplishments are recognized would be from, from five years after graduating from high school in 2012. So if I came from California, which is not really a surrounding or <laughs> yeah, that would probably <laughs> sister not community. Yeah. yeah. That wouldn't count. There, there's the, I just think, uh, we, yeah, I'll yeah. send you an email with my. But I think we could all take a look. I, my recommendation for all of us would be the action item would be for us to tighten it up. I think. Edit it to your heart's content. Send it in to staff that, to Tom. He'll collate them. Uh, if you got questions, pick up the phone and call them, mm -hmm. and then um, they can bring us a working document back at the next month's meeting, and we'll see where we where we land on that. Um, but I think you're into the right the right the right senses, which are residency may mm -hmm. have participated you know it's got to leave it open for youth and adults i like this idea of requesting the input to fill boxes of of what 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 is their accomplishment that they're trying to get most proud of that they filled all three that they were just a successful youth that they did something after high school but i'm you know the perfect candidate for this is that guy that played pitched at nine years old or played lacrosse at nine years old and went on to a professional career i mean that's the prototypical model and then but after it's not that just is... sports i mean because a lot of things are under the parks umbrella mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they made an excellent ceramic cat when they were five and they yeah. came back and they painted a landscape award-winning cat 
someone yeah. that started out in our dance program and makes Broadway, right? right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Anything like that, one hundred percent. But it's, I think it's the the intents to try and recognize somebody from the community touched our programming, was touched by it, then moved on to some level of accomplishment, and then you know, so that kind of is the perfect youth, and then the next group is adults who want some fame, and the the easy one is coaches or administrators who ran a program and did it really well um you could fill the room with coaches who could be nominated and that makes it hard again because how do you sort out of you know the 50 coaches that hya has how do you sort out somebody nominated someone we know that already um and then there's you know just kind of the general people that are in the community um and we've already done that um so you know those are those are sort of the adult kind of people that are touching and moving the program. Um, those are sort of the three buckets, but I think it starts with, you know, the kids and then to the point of, you know, if anybody is equestrian, then, you, you know, that's an entirely different kind of, they might've lived here, maybe they did equestrian privately. That's not parks programming. Um, they might've played on their high school team. Those are our high school equestrian events. So they, maybe they touched mm -hmm. something along the way, um, but that's, you know, another layer to, take into a, to account. Um, but I think you're right. An Olympic athlete that moves here that's a record setter in the javelin throw doesn't necessarily make them, they're coming at it from the wrong direction mm -hmm. to get on the wall of fame. And uh, if I don't have enough people, I'm happy to look at those, but I, I want to make sure we take care of our own first, so. And it says voting process twice. So is it voting process and then voting format? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? It just says voting process twice. I think that's possible. So one is this process, is one is statute. format. Mm -hmm. And then there's yeah. the formula we use. So yes, I'll, I'll yeah. send you that. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So that's our work on that item. Hold on, Mr. Chairman. Yes, um, sir. There yeah. has been discussion and uh, it doesn't really uh, add any uh, city staff. This isn't a burden on city staff, but. Um, I know there's been discussion that the amount of time that a nominee is remains on the ballot might want to be addressed as well. Yeah, um, fair enough. Seven years is a long time. Um, we, I know that our ballot was is starting to get long, and yep. uh, everyone that doesn't make it this year will remain for seven. Um, I, I can I can foresee in a couple more years the board will be evaluating 35 people yeah, 60 or people. more yeah um, so for for us it's it makes it makes no difference uh to city staff um but i'm just Practical. throwing it out there yeah. for hey, the sake we, of the board trade i mean i'm asking tom assistant okay, maybe one year nobody have the the right to be there i mean each year um, one amount of i don't know how many? Two, three? How many? Yeah, so there's uh, there is a voting there is a tally number. So there is the potential that if not every year, it's not like we put in eight every year or yeah. nine, right? Yep. If if someone doesn't reach the num the the six sixty percent of the votes, then they're you know so we could have a year with two or we could have a year with nine. Yep. We've had we've had uh, six the first year and seven the second year. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think you're onto something though about that we can put in the criteria, which is on the other side. If you yeah. don't achieve a certain threshold of votes and then you just fall off, you know, and maybe it's done that way rather than time-based. I, I think that's a good one. It, maybe it's under whatever that percentage is, 25 or 30 or, I mean, and maybe I think, I think you probably have to give them two years, yeah. right? Two, you, you get at least two years. And then if you've been on for two years and yeah. you still haven't so. achieved that, if you're not moving up in the rankings, then you're, then you're you know, moving out. It's only, you can't, you can't get any better. Cooperstown baseball hall of fame. If you don't reach one amount, in the you don't you don't pass to the second year. Yeah. yeah. Nope, that's right. So we we can put all that into consideration. Everything's in play. Um, if you uh, to those of you who in the room, those of you who are not in the room, if you haven't turned in your ballots tournament, last housekeeping item. That would be me. <laughs> I have issues with my city okay. email. Okay. Um, next item of new business, Tom. Donated art in parks. 
Yes, uh, we have recently been approached um, to have art, um, a, a, a statue uh, donated to a park in Milton. Um, while that sounds great, uh, I feel like there needs to be some process for art to be approved um, and not just have myself or someone on staff say, yeah, okay, great idea, where? Um, and I don't know if the Parks and Rec Board is the answer, uh, but because it's going in parks, I think it's fair to at least throw this idea by you. Um, I don't expect to have an answer today. Uh, we do have the Milton Arts Council. Um, they are a nonprofit, but they are involved with the city. Um, Why is that they're advisory? they're another yeah they're another component to this um, potentially. But uh, you know, I the idea of you know, well, why didn't you let my art in? You let their art in. I think there needs to be a process to alleviate those issues moving forward. I have um, a statue of myself done for <laughs> donate it. A big shiny. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you're you're gonna you're gonna buy it. Oh, you you just need a place to put it. You know? <laughs> exactly. No, you, you, it's a it's a valid a valid point. Um, the fact that it resides in the park, we don't have. I mean. Parks and Rec Board is not the final um, arbiter of what goes on in the parks. We take care of the programming and not necessarily what goes on in all parks, right? Um, Providence Park is being redeveloped and constructed and we have, that's a public works project. It has nothing to do with us. So um, first opening reaction is it's not a, it's really not a park in Rex Advisory Board primary issue. Um, Artwork probably got to pass some review because what is art to one person is a religious statue to another, is not represented by another. It could be offensive to some. And so somebody has to go do some work. Okay. Um, and I would probably argue at some point council has to vote on what goes in because it's reflective of the community and it's not our say. Um, they can get a lot of opinion. So, um, the idea of donating things to the park, I mean, we have some things in the park already. You know, we have a nice statue of Bell. We didn't review that. That came out of staff's idea and council's idea and a, do and a donation and it, it got taken. We have horses all over the city. Those are easy, right? Um, I think you got your hands full. You, you, need, <laughs> you, need, you need to circle a couple, I, suggest, I would suggest a couple of chairs of some committees to talk about you know, building out a process. So it's the Arts Council. It is I would somebody think it would from start. Public Works. It is somebody from community development. It's all those kind of places to touch. I would think it would start with the Arts Council from their recommendation of what would be there. And then possibly to us and then yeah, I mean, City Works and then, and then to the Council. I, I think to your point, I think the Council has the ultimate say but i think we're just maybe one step of yeah that makes sense you know again the question of are we going to put yeah if you're putting something at bell which is primarily uh i would think what you'd want at bell would be different than what we might want at birmingham yeah right yeah. just a different u yeah. utilization or what the fields the are equestrian committee gets them so it's a, it's a whole you know, host of committees that need to have some say because the destination drives yeah, it just seems like two pieces, the donation of art and then where it goes. So if this person said, I want to give you this for at this park. This particular individual did not specify a park. Oh. But, but I, can see I, I think that if this were to become a more common thing, that they would probably we need have a, a destination, a, yeah, a they location. A place yeah. that they want. Most would probably have a location where they would like to yeah. place it. So, yeah, so... Um, Interesting that it wants to go in park. I'm not against decorating parks and decorations around the city, but I think it starts with the Arts Council and then they've got to figure out what's yeah. art for the city. Yeah. That's, and maybe that's it passes their through to And they can pass it through their, and, yeah. their respective places. That'd be my take on how art fits into city. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Um, next item, city staff reports and communications. All right, Mr. Chairman, uh, first up is the Providence Park projects. Uh, we have three projects ongoing uh, out at Providence Park. We have the 
trails, um, the ADA asphalt trail. Uh, there is some relocation of natural trails uh, to pull them away from the property lines. And um, we've got the pier project and the restroom project. Uh, the trails are moving along very quickly. Um, they're all cleared uh, the, the, for the ADA trail anyway. Um, it's ready for asphalt uh, and they're gonna be paving uh, this month. So it's gonna really look a lot different real soon. Um, the natural trails are not relocated, but uh, from what I understand, that's a very quick process uh, for them to just reblaze re another trail. Um, <clears throat> the, the pier, uh, they have not started the construction yet. Um, we were waiting on some approvals uh, from the state and uh, mainly pertaining to the water. So uh, we're gonna be starting that soon. We got the approval conditional. So we're, we're good to go there. Um, and on the restrooms, uh, as you may know, um, the bid for the original design came in extremely high. Uh, so um, there is another bid on the street now um, that I put together to uh, put a more simple basic restroom uh, in the same, at the same site. Uh, we we uh, removed a lot of the cost driving factors and uh, hopefully we can get something a little more closer to budget here. Uh, so th that, that park's gonna have tremendous popularity, I expect, and it's not gonna survive without restrooms. Um, so uh, that's that's it with Providence Park right now. Uh, any questions? Okay, at the Foreman Milton Country Club, uh, we've got the new trails going in as well as the remodel of the clubhouse. Um, the trail project is moving along. Um, all this, all the old sidewalks are out on on the trail side and they are uh, re relocating the new trail. I don't believe there's any material down yet, but they've started the pathways. Um, that's not, that's a public works project. So um, I'm, I'm not in the day to day. Yeah. Uh, I, I get updated weekly, but that's, that's what I got last week. Um, as far as the clubhouse goes, uh, we are moving and grooving now. Um, one little hiccup to start uh, with some structural flooring issues, but that's been alleviated. And uh, I would expect today um, the majority of the framing done. Uh, so we're probably looking at November when uh, the building is complete. Um, and then we'll, we'll be anxious to start filling it with some programs. Um, any questions on the Fort Milton Country Club? I think I caught it all. Uh, Cox Road. So I know a lot of a lot of the board here. Um, we haven't met since a lot. A lot's happened on the staff side. Um, there is uh, a bid that is out for the turfing of the two fields and the fencing and the netting as well. Uh, those bids are due back to us middle of next month, uh, and we're planning on having, assuming it comes in at, uh, at budget, um, to do in between the two seasons. So start in November and have it wrapped up by February, uh, sometime in February. Um, I, I believe it's without any major delays about a 60 day project. So I'm going 75. <laughs> Because <laughs> you're going to hit something, yep. um, but uh, we're, we're making progress. We're moving. We've made it to the next step. Um, awesome. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we get some encouraging bids in that uh, look good. When are the bids due? Middle of next month, September 14th, I believe. Yes. Any other questions? Yes. Questions on the staff road? No, that's great. Yeah. 
the last the last item is summer programming wrap up, wrap up. I believe Thomas is probably more equipped to fill you in, and and you might you might have already caught a lot of it in the committee report, really. Yeah, yeah that's, it, that's what I was going to say. Uh, a lot of the the summer programming was touched on in the committee reports. Uh, again, we had you know great success in all our athletics. We were able to fit in our arts programming uh, with our facilities. Uh, basically, their you know first desired dates. We were able to to fit them on fit them in and then obviously next summer with the uh, former Milton Country Club open to programs, I will be a little more spread out. And I think we're going to get, uh, you know, a lot of popularity and some more traction with some of our lesser uh, popular programs uh, with that addition. Um, and then lastly, Camp Joyful Souls came came to an end uh, July 30th. We had a great seven weeks um, of the 175 uh, available spaces. Uh, we filled 173. So I think we did the Great. math, Tom. That was like ninety-eight point three percent. Wow. Of of our and, and some of the spots. contributing factor to that was, you know, we would have we would have a bad fit for camp, and when we found out when that was, it was too late to either fill it with a waiting list kid or we didn't have a waiting list that week. So, um, if we would have known ahead of time, I I would imagine we could have probably hit 100 percent so definitely that's great right. yeah another another great summer um we were glad to be back this year and and mill springs did a, a great job hosting us this year so i think we'll we'll be excited to you know continue that relationship mm -hmm. so that concludes it for uh summer programming wrap-up they got any athletic fields up there they want to share tom they want to partner in turf. They got field. They got some decent fields, I think, but they're not. They got some shape. room. They have room. They just don't have some great shape, right? It, it's in a pretty bad floodplain. Oh. oh, so it's on a floodplain. Yeah, gotcha. I've never been back there. I've only seen it. Yeah, they 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 the told they, they they told me that there was one spring season where they didn't play at all. Baseball. Yeah, perfect. Okay, unfortunately. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Get a uh, bit of a small school like any that, other right? business uh, for the Parks and Rec board? Board members, comments, observations? Good. Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I will make a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Alberici. Do I hear a second? I will second. Second by Maybe. Ms. Tucker. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you, one and all. Thank See you. you next month. Turn off your computer. Sir.